looking at uh, and DEI initiatives on campus. And I know this is top of mind for so many of you that have diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, already ingrained into the goals of your, of your college or your school. Because as career services, we have an opportunity and a responsibility to act for social justice and play that key role as the great equalizer, right? Education is supposed to be the great equalizer that makes so that where you come from doesn't determine where you go in life. But this overuse of job titles is really preventing our progress in that regard. So uh, I wanna tell you about how we can move beyond that as fast as possible because our students need us to do that. As educators, the research shows that uh, we can be at risk of using stereotypes to push people towards certain low status occupations. That's what we want to avoid. I mean, the people on this on the call know this. They know of these risks, and they know that the students that they see uh, might have lived this already in their lives. Uh, we're also at the risk of going the opposite way. Of, for example, recommending a four-year college for everyone, uh, when really uh, all groups need a diversity of uh, options, learning options, and uh, to lead them to great outcomes. Right. And this question was so interesting for the OECD. Um, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, that they did a research project on uh, kids' career aspirations. They surveyed 11,000 students. And it turns out that their aspirations were narrow, mismatched, stereotyped, locked in early, and they had a lack of role models. <laughs> it's a bit discouraging to read that out loud, by the way, but we need to know these facts because it changes this career paradigm that we've got. Let me tell you why. Half of boys and girls expected to work in one of the top 10 most popular jobs. That's very narrow, 10 jobs. They're mismatched because they weren't even linked with what the labor market needed, so much so that the report, the research report they wrote after this was called Nothing in Common. The choices were heavily influenced by social background, gender, and the stereotypes started at a very young age. Even their aspirations were pretty set at age seven and they changed relatively little between then and age 18. Some of you are st seeing students at age 18, they're still locked in. And this lack of role models, uh, less than 1% get to meet world mo uh, role models in the world of work. And this tends to um, uh, overly affect people from disadvantaged backgrounds. We met with someone from a school that said to us, we wanna help our students see it, be it. See it, be it. Uh, and how can you do that without role models, right? So it's a huge, uh, problem that we're running into. But one common thread I want to point out through this entire uh, research results is that these career aspirations of youth are all focused on job titles. This approach is from a past economy, it's from the industrial economy, not even for the information economy that we're in now, and even less for the next economy that's coming after this. So we will not make the necessary progress in careers and diversity, equity, and inclusion unless we break free of this perspective. So if students are being asked, what do you want to do? What do you like? This reflects what they already know. Their environment, their neighborhood, their family, their circles. Focusing on students on what they already know risks reinforcing their status quo. So if you work with students that come from a disadvantaged background, difficult environments, a lack of parent, parental support, oppressed group, generational trauma, it's a big list, but I... I know that's what you do, right? That's who you want to help. Our focus should be on helping them broaden their horizons, not just look back on what they already know. Heather McGowan, an, an author that I really admire, wrote, choosing a future self based on the portfolio available in a child's family and social structures serves to replicate the conditions of that structure into adulthood. I love the way she said that. I think that's something that we all know on this call. I really respect her work, by the way. She's a great person to follow on LinkedIn. Her point of view on the future of work is great. And I like this book that she wrote. So what does that mean practically? Well, if we're using an interest inventory and you're asking your students to, uh, to say, well, do you uh, like buying and selling stocks and bonds? It's hard to like buying stocks and bonds when you don't know what's a stock or a bond, right? So if the entire process starts with this inventory, we're limiting students. And Rich Feller from the National Career Development Association had a great way of explaining this. Um, he's a professor at Colorado State University and gave a STEM example. If they haven't been exposed to scientific and technical careers, 
they're less likely to self-report an interest in those job paths. After all, it's hard to be interested in something that you know nothing about. I link this with, uh, 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 well, his phrase for it is exposure bias. If you haven't been exposed to it, how can you know what it is? And there's a body of literature called the mere exposure effect that speaks to this. And that's a psychological phenomenon where people tend to develop a preference for things merely because they're familiar with them. And in social psychology, they call it the familiarity principle. By the way, all of my research articles are linked in these slides. So uh, Sally's shared these slides already. And if someone's showed up late, I'm gonna ask Sally to share these slides again with you if ever you want just the academic research uh, that I've cited throughout the presentation. So my big message to you is that if we don't maximize our, uh, if we wanna maximize uh, our career development efforts, our DEI efforts, if we wanna maximize the potential of our students, we need to help them look beyond job titles. And the best way to do that is to move them from a job title mindset to a challenge mindset. 